it's relatively rare to have true piriformis syndrome. Let me explain. Statistically, piriformis syndrome is much less common than a pinched nerve in the back from, for example, a herniated disc or a spinal stenosis. In fact, the L5-S1 disc is the most commonly herniated disc in the back, and the L5 and S1 nerve roots join together and form the bulk of the sciatic nerve. So a symptomatic herniated disc or spinal stenosis at that level, the L5-S1, and piriformis syndrome can clinically look identical. Further, a branch of the L5 nerve innervates the piriformis muscle, so when the L5 nerve roots inflamed, it's very common that the piriformis muscle will spasm as a protective reflex. And because they look the same clinically, it's very easy to see how easy it can be to confuse the two conditions. And indeed, they often are confused. In the past, before we knew all that we know now, piriformis syndrome was wildly overdiagnosed. You can imagine how this happened. If someone has a pinched nerve in the back and the piriformis muscle spasms as a result, and you massage the piriformis muscle and it feels better, and you think you found a problem. But then the piriformis muscle spasms again a day later or so, because the muscle's still responding to the inflamed nerve root. And so you think it's a difficult to treat piriformis spasm, and you massage it again, or you inject it with a trigger point injection. And again, it feels better. And again, the pain returns a few days later. Now, because disc herniations and spinal nerve root inflammation is statistically so much more common to the tune of about 98%, today we understand that it is reasonable to assume that pain in the piriformis muscle and then pain radiating down the back of the leg is in fact an inflamed nerve root coming from the back until proven otherwise.